Jonathan. Abby, I'll just start with a quick thank you. So this is going to be uh, the two of us back and forth with Kim and Abby, but first first off, I want to say thank you to Jonathan and the group at GMIS for hosting these Sandbox the series that it's been incredible. I've been on a few of them myself, and I, I haven't seen this level of collaboration among industry before the pandemic. So I hope if one thing, one silver lining comes out of the pandemic is we're all working on more of this collaboration together sharing our wins, sharing our losses and our learnings together of how we can then move forward. So as Jonathan mentioned, Abby and I, have, you know, we've developed a great relationship and, and we were talking about how we could do this. And originally we were planning on talking about how we did pivot during, and we all know pivot is that worst word that we never want to hear again. And hopefully it gets removed from the dictionary, but here we are. So we pivoted, we want to talk about how we did but then as we talked about planning this session, we pivoted again. And so it'll be two parts to our session today where we will also get into going forward. So we thought that would be the most beneficial for this group today. We'll talk a little bit about how we worked together uh, over the last year, but then going into how we would approach partnership as we're looking toward events coming back together. Here we go. So um, this is this ad, a pictures of Abby and I. So Jonathan did a great intro and, and just a little bit about me. I've been here with the festival for 10 years. Uh, before that, worked at Tourism Charlottetown at the time doing festivals and events there. So I started in operations, then moved over into partnerships and product development and love working amongst our, with industry and looking at what, can, what is the next best, best thing. And being on PEI, that is our jurisdiction. So looking at how we can make the best next impact on PEI. So pass it over to Abby quickly so she can tell a little bit about herself and her, her role and where she came from. So over to you, Abby. Thanks, Kim. And I echo everything you said. We're really excited to be part of this presentation today. So thank you, Jonathan, for asking us to uh, to speak to this group and welcome everyone. I, I noticed quite a few familiar names. I can't say familiar faces because before this world, we were never meeting over Zoom. So it's great to, to actually put these names to faces. Um, so as Kim and Jonathan mentioned, I'm with Atlantic Lottery and I've been with Atlantic Lottery for five years now. I started right out of university and my first role with the organization was in the winner's department. So I was the person who got to give money out to everyone who won the lottery. It was a very exciting job, but then I since switched fields and now I work on the sponsorship team and I'm now the person who gets to give money to com communities. So very fulfilling, fulfilling role. Um, I deal with happy people majority of the time and it's, it's really great to see all of you here today because I think there's gonna be some great takeaways for, for all of you. And Kim and I just can't wait to, to dive into things. Get, get that discussion rolling. So I think we'll, we'll start right into where, where we all were say this time, around this time last year, I guess maybe two weeks ago, uh, a year ago, where things were still normal, plans were in place. We were 95% you know, of the way to getting our deal done with Atlantic Lottery for Cavendish Beach Music Festival last year. We, like everyone, 2019 was a great year, going into 2020, expecting it to be another banger year. Um, we had some very exciting things lined up with our partnership with Atlantic Lottery to bring to Cavendish Beach Music Festival, many of which we hope to happen in 2022. So we'll keep those under our hat for now. But at that time, so in the pivoting side, we were ready to roll and then the world changed and we were dealing with, we'll say, even with another representative at Atlantic Lottery and then there was some switch. Then we were, you know, our first pivot was we had the pandemic, but now we're introduced to Abby and her new role. And even though we've been working with Atlantic Lottery since the inception of the festival, Every year is different, what we do, how we do it, what the objectives are. So even though the, the people changed, there was still a lot of great history there. But now here's Kim and Abby, we're in a pandemic trying to figure out what can we still do? We know that all our plans aren't gonna happen because a lot of them involve some cool on-site engagement. So now what? Now what can we do together? 
And poor Abby, she's pulled it. She gets the, here you get Cavendish Beach Music Festival now on your file. Should be a good year. Everything's pretty much baked in. You know, just, you know, get creative with some stuff. So this was our first one was our first pivot was into the drive-in. So Cavendish Beach Music Festival obviously did not happen last year as usual with uh, 20,000 plus people a day. But one of the items that we were able to pull off was a drive-in festival. So part of that drive-in festival at our venue, you can see in that middle picture, there is the stage. Uh, it was their permanent infrastructure. But surrounding that drive-in was also created a TV show. So there's a TV show that aired on CTV2 the same night we had a drive-in. So normally, just to, rather than getting it too complicated here, so you can see also over to the right, there was a contest to promote for an island getaway. So we partnered with a lot of our bigger regular partners that you see in here. There's Bell, there's Atlantic Lottery, uh, RBC isn't on here. They were sponsoring some of the artists, but also there was a big pre-event contest that was helping to push awareness and travel to PEI. When we were in market with this, we were all very hopeful that the Atlantic bubble was going to open. So here we are pushing uh, different partners, nothing about the drive in on the island getaway contest, but part of our deal with Bell was able to bring that to the table to get some great promotion for PEI as a destination. And this particular show, the TV show, where normally we would have 60,000 people over the three days at the festival, the TV show was watched by 98,000 people live. So gosh, that's like 50% more than you'd normally have. So when we're talking with partners about, yeah, we can't have people physically in the venue, but I can still bring you an audience. So the best way to show you how this looked is to show you a bit of a video. So part of what Atlantic Lottery did, and Abby, I don't know if you wanna to speak to this before or after I hit play, because this is an Atlantic Lottery video and. And this was really, this was all on, on them and their initiative and how Atlantic Lottery pivoted their, their communications and their marketing messages over the summer. So do you want to speak to it first and then I'll play it or? I'll speak to it after. Okay. We can just roll with it. Yeah. This event is about community. This is an event about PEI. This is an event about supporting local musicians and artists in a very trying year. We're used to hosting 25, 27, 28,000 people here over three days on a, on a nightly basis. And, and if you look here behind you, there's 300 to 400 cars. And uh, yeah, it's considerably different and it's considerably downscaled. But let's not take away from what's going on on the stage. And that's great local entertainment, which Cavendish Beach Music Festival has prided itself on being a platform to help emerging artists uh, grow and get exposure. The support we receive from sponsors, these things don't happen without sponsors and community-minded businesses and organizations who, who continue to see the value and put their resources and their sponsorship dollars behind these things because they know the impact that it has on, on our culture. And I think what it does, it just continues to solidify those relationships that we are working in partnership uh, to create the great place that we know is, is, is Prince Edward Island. I think the impact on our community is it, it's, it's hope it's resilience, uh, it's a feel good, and it gives people a break. People are feeling that they get out for a Saturday night again and, and they're enjoying their friends and their family and their camaraderie and being in a spot where it's part of our culture here in PEI with the musicians and the artists from the North Shore. And it feels pretty normal and it feels, feels pretty uh, summerish, which I think people have all been looking forward to. I get goosebumps when I watch that me because too. it just makes me so happy. Me I too. Mean, it was, we all know it was a crazy year last year and we're all looking forward to being on the end and the upside of, uh, of this pandemic. But to be able to work with Cavendish on a partnership like this where, where really we weren't certain what the future of festival events was going to look like. And some of you may on this call may have heard from from me from Atlantic Lottery when we had made the decision to cancel our our program for the year because we weren't sure that we were going to be able to support festivals and events and to have an initiative like this that came up and you know it was safe you were social distance you you hit all those check marks that you needed to um it was a it was a no-brainer for us and and that's one thing that we'll get into later is is just 
true partnerships and just being able to have the confidence in your partner that you can pivot and you can have great ideas come from, from these conversations. So pivot one kind of aligns with pivot two. So that when we were talking to Abby about overall, what could we do together with Atlantic Lottery in the summer and hearing from her what her objectives were and what things had changed and how they're communicating in market now, it was less about buy your lottery tickets today and more about the, that community message. You can see it was all Atlantic Lottery community proud and less brand. And so in our conversations with Abby of okay, trying to figure out what we can do, that desire for those money can't buy experiences, we're still primary, we're still top of mind. So still want to offer some type of experiences that people, doesn't matter how much money you had, you couldn't have received it and get some extra rewards. So in hearing that from Abby, and so we did the drive-in and also knowing that there was this need, well, we have the ability to do some deals with artists and such. So Brett Kissel is one of my personal favorite artists when it comes to this type of experiences. Um, there's a lot of great Canadian talent, but in this particular one, Brett is so good to deliver a key message for a in, a, in a partner so it doesn't come across as a selly sell, but can also regionalize and localize the show. So part of the, the deal that we made with Abby and Atlantic Lottery throughout the summer was a bit of both of this. There was help us support in the drive-in. And also what we can do is bring you a Canadian artist to do a specific show just for Atlantic Lottery that they can use to do pre-event contesting and whatnot. So maybe I'll pass it over to you at this point, Abby, to tell a little bit about from the Atlantic Lottery side of how the Brett Kissel concert was for you. And you let me know at what point you want me to hit the video. For sure. So for us, like Kim had mentioned, of course, everyone's objectives changed, I think, with throughout the pandemic. I mean, you had certain goals, like she had said, that you wanted to be on site, have an on-site activation that pushed sales, sold tickets, anything like that. But then we realized this isn't the time, this isn't the year to really be on site. And we're not going to be able to be on site because a lot of festivals weren't happening. So we had a really good chat with, with Kim and shared what our objectives were. And we knew that we wanted to just be in contact with their audience and provide them with an opportunity that money can't buy, for example. So what we did is we offered 10 Atlantic Canadians a chance to win a VIP exclusive um, intimate concert with Brett Kissel. And they were able to submit questions to Brett. So it was a concert. And then it, there was also a little Q&A session afterwards. So you got to submit your questions to Brett. And in addition to that, Atlantic Lottery sent out um, prize packages to all of these attendees. So there was a gift card for a local restaurant in, in their community where they could purchase food for them in their, their bubble to enjoy the show. And we also sent some, some decor so they could make it feel like it wasn't just another Zoom concert that you were watching. We wanted to bring some sort of experience to them. And as Kim mentioned, Brett is, is an amazing artist to work with. He's, he's human, which I know that sounds silly to say, but he, his music industry does not impact who he is as an individual. And, and I think that shows with this video here, he's very personable. Um, and we were very fortunate that he, he did this video here for us. So if you wanna play that, Kim. Sure. Hey everybody, it's me, Brett Kissel, reminding you to enter the contest called A Few Good Stories with me, Brett Kissel, uh, so you and 10 of your friends can win an online one-on-one -on -one concert experience where we're going to share a lot of great stories and country music and all that good stuff. So swipe up right now, enter to win. So through that, uh, that promotion and the contesting, we were able to hit our targets, which was communicating and getting email signups and all those jazz. But as I mentioned, our goals completely shifted from what we thought they were going to be during that year. And that speaks volumes to partnerships when you're able to, to have conversations with your partners and just say, hey, look, like I know your goals have probably changed this year, but our goals have changed too. So how can we support one another so you can hit your goals and, and we can hit ours. 
Exactly. And, and at the, at the end of the day, what Abby and I, what we're trying to accomplish is connect that brand with the fans. And even though Cavendish Beach Music Festival cannot host a bunch of people physically in the field, there has been such a community created over the last 12 years. They, they feel ownership in it. They're connected. And we feel like it's our job to keep them connected in a fun way. And uh, especially with digital experiences, trying to keep them fun and exciting and to get people not from Zoom fatigue was interesting. But it's not, again, it's not just about the show. So the thing with Brett Kissel may have only lasted an hour, but the benefits on both sides are that pre-event marketing, all of that activity, people talking, getting excited for something again, that grows our reach, grows Atlantic Lottery's reach, and keeps all our brands alive while people were waiting for something to do. You know, interestingly. Hey yeah. everybody, it's me, uh, Brett Kissel. It's Brett again, me. look at me, it's Brett again. <laughs> Look at that, it's bread again. So the first one that we just did, that was you know private for Atlantic Lottery with Brett Kissel. So other than being marketed on their channels for a win for a, for a contest, that one was really spearheaded by Atlantic Lottery. And even you can see in the creative had nothing to do with Cavendish Beach Music Festival. Although in the, in the deal, the deal was that we did with Atlantic Lottery was part drive-in, part Canadian artist. So even though one of the deliverables was happening post drive-in, it was still a big part of the deliverable um, to get the, that great show happening. And because Brett did such a great job on the private one with Atlantic Lottery, he was our number one to go back and do a public one. So we had our pivot three, we'll say, with Atlantic Lottery was the CBMF holiday hangout. Why did we do that? Well, normally at Christmas time is when we would be you know, late November, early December is when we would announce headliners and go on sale. You know, we still we would sell about 40% of our tickets in an average year before Christmas. That wasn't going to be the case this year. We knew that we weren't going to have anything to announce. We and but we at this point we still don't know what summer may look like. So we don't have anything concrete to say to the festival fans, but we know we need to say something. And back to the overall uh, reason for living and what we do is it's for those fans. So what can we do? So here was some bad news of, we have nothing to tell you. We're very hopeful, have a great Christmas season, but here's some good news for you is we're gonna have a little concert. It's the CBMF holiday hangout. It's free, you don't have to pay. There's a lot of Zoom events that are happening uh, with concerts where you have to pay 20 bucks and that, and the, they're not getting great reach. I will tell you, tell you that, like it is, it is tough to make money off ticket sales for an online event. Um, we found the better revenue model is to work with partners because also with the partner side, if you're not charging tickets, well, I can get more eyeballs for the partners because it's now free for everyone rather than being ticketed. So the idea came from our, from our need is we needed to communicate, but we wanted to have something fun to do and engage our fans. But we also still wanted to work with our partners on how we could deliver some, some programming or some meet some of their objectives. So this is one that we kind of started where it originally started to where it ended was another thing that was different. So this was one that Atlantic Lottery came on board to help as a partner and say, yeah, we're, we're in to help you. We think it's a great idea. Let's do it. So but then through conversation and talking back and forth with Abby and hearing more about the importance of the community crowd and getting involved and also seeing how great of a job Abby did at the private one with Brett, we're like, well, why don't we look at this being hosted by Atlantic Lottery and bring instead of it's just being Brett, now there is a Abby and Brett banter of back and forth. And that was fun from a production perspective, right, Abby, to make it look live. Extremely. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, well, we can work this out. It was live to tape and they filmed it not at the same time, but it appeared that they were live at the same time. So there's lots of ways to make that happen. Um, before I go on and play the video, Abby, I may just want to pass it over to you and, and your thoughts on the initial part of CBMF holiday hangout and when we first talked to you about it. Yeah. So like Kim mentioned is we went in with a vision of what it was going to look like. And by the end of it, we had a total different um, plan for it, similar to this presentation that we'll, we'll talk about later. Um, and 
and like I said earlier, to have that relationship with your partner to know like, okay, we know that an event is going to be an, a success, but having trust that if something different pops up or you have a different idea, you don't need to necessarily stick to the contract, stick to what's in the fine print. It's just knowing that can I still at the end of the day meet my objectives, even though we didn't sign off on this, even though um, this is, is different from what we, we had thought. And when Kim asked me to host, it, it really was a no brainer because our brand is community proud. Our everything that Atlantic Lottery is, is kind of doing now, especially with our festival events program is to be community proud. So with that, that opportunity to host, we were able to get into everyone's community. It was their homes, but we were able to really connect and, and be community proud through our partnership. Yuki, there's no audio in this. Keep going, Abby. I just thought it'd be good to play this video while you were, yeah. while you were speaking so they could see what it looked like. Absolutely. So as I mentioned, to have a, a platform like this to, to connect with any audience, we had like a live chat going where we could participate. We were able to engage with the fans. And, and the nice part of this was it wasn't just your standard Zoom call, like Kim had mentioned, um, or your Zoom concert, I should say, because we were able to really engage with the audience. And that was a big thing that we looked at too with this partnership is that we didn't want to be, I don't want to say that we didn't want to, but really we didn't want to just do another video where you could probably find that online or something like that. We wanted it to be different and unique and we wanted people to watch it and leave and be be proud that they took the time out of their day to watch it and feel like, okay, this was this was worth it and this was this was different. Thanks, Abby. And so a big part of this one, uh, is similar to a lot of the other ones, this the show itself was an hour. But the ben and the, and the benefits, the partners are a little bit within the show. Um, but this one in particular, and working with Abby and what her objectives were, we knew that you know signing, getting more email signups was important to her. We knew that social media connection was important to her, and all and to their brand, and also you know, doing some kind of surprise and delights. So as we were planning, how do we activate our own events? Um, and in talking with how the partnership would work is like, well, what if, you know, we can get, ask people to sign up for the Atlantic lottery email list as well, and as well as ours. So because it was a free entry, it was free to, to enter to, and to sign up, but also you were entered into a contest where one of 10 people, sorry, 10 people total throughout the Maritimes were winning some swag bags, some really awesome gift bags that we were hand delivering right to your door getting some good social content, um, and then also wanting people to talk about it online as well. So as part of the sign up form, we did ask those that were in, in order to be eligible for the prize, you were asking a question for Brett. So that's where we were getting questions. Uh, but also you needed to be 19 and over because some of our partners were targeted just to adults like Atlantic Lottery, but we had other partners like Tito's Vodka. Also, it's alcohol partner, you had to be 19 plus. So we were able to add some of that and uh, we were very surprised and pleasantly surprised at, at the percentage. Like people were, they were so appreciative of it that you know, we had a very high, high, high percentage of folks uh, choosing to sign up to hear from Atlantic Lottery again. And part of the touch points that we were able to do as this trial was working with Abby and her and through her, her marketing team to set up those metrics along the way of to gauge this as a success or a fail, what do we need to track? And it's not just about how many people come to your event or how many people watch your show. The metrics are different for every partner. So we wanted to, to gather how many people would sign up total to hear from Atlantic Lottery and what percentage of that was from our total audience. And then Abby would look on the other end and say, okay, well, how many of those are new acquisitions? versus ones I already have. And then can they then go to the next step and offer some kind of limited time promo to see if these new acquisitions would convert? So I don't know, Abby, if you wanted to talk a little bit about some of that process and looking at how you're looking at it, or there's the sponsor side, uh, but then how you bring that back to the tactics of your metric side and measurement. Yeah, absolutely. So on, on Kim's end, I would say, 
it was a relatively easy thing for, for them to do for us, which an easy thing for them was turned into a huge thing for us because we were able to reach our goals. And, and we knew, like, as I had mentioned, we knew that one of our biggest things was hitting more people through email marketing and connecting in a different way versus when we connect in person with on-site activations. So through this opportunity to help promote Cavendish Beach Holiday Hangout, we were able to hit our marketing goals and have this link that Kim was able to track. And I won't go into all the details of how, uh, how that was set up and navigated and whatnot, but through that, we did create a customer journey. So we had, we hit our goals. We exceeded them really. We, we usually try to get about a 30% goal and, and we, we achieved that. And, and after that, we looked at everyone who had registered and then we did a player journey through new players. How do we get them involved? And, and I look at the, what we've taken away from, from festival events this year is a lot of people have gone virtual and this is such an easy thing when you're working with partners to just find out what their, their objectives are to help them achieve and help them on the event side, it works as free marketing for you. Yes. And then when your partners really engage like this on their social channels, they're all talking all about it, which is ultimately good for you because it's a good promotion for them. So to be able to have, we've always, to be able to have that reach of Atlantic Lottery throughout the region when none of us have marketing budgets that we're really working with in a pandemic, but we want to stay alive and we want to offer something fun and cool. Um, then with the gift bags, Atlantic Lottery sent us some swag that uh, people got, you know, premium swag. Um, they were getting, you know, awesome jackets from Country Liberty and tours and PEI. So there were some really cool things that were done in the swag bags. Um, but what I would leave you with on this one is, um, you don't want to sound super braggy, but this one did win, did win an award. So this video came from Fan XP, which is the platform we used, um, but did win an award on the platform. So this one was for best free live streamed event. And what it was won on basically was the integration of those partners and the engagement during it. So the chats, the beforehand stuff during the show and post. So even though we're just little place here in Atlanta, Canada, guys, we still need to dream big over here. And, you know, we were up there with winners like the Toronto Raptors, you know, Abby watched some of the, from the winning video. So we're, we're up there with the upper echelons of major events in the world. So we're super proud of this. And I will tell you like the cost of this to do it was 20 grand, not a lot, not a lot, but we got great benefit out of it and we would do it again. A lot of work, again, I'm not a TV producer. I never want to be, um, but we're lucky that we work with partners who like to be in front of it. So that was, I think at this point, Abby, did we were going into some questions, but I think we first wanted, that was, you know, our first say top three pivots and want to maybe put it back on with the group to see if anyone had any questions at this point about those, the first three pivots. So we just did those first buckets. Like everyone, there's been hundreds of pivots, but those are our highlight reel. So any questions on those first three or how they came to be? Hi, it's uh, Seamus here. Seamus. Wondering, um, just as the pandemic started, where were you in your relationship? Were you in a multi-year deal? Were you year to year? And if so, how did that impact kind of how you pivoted? And if you look back over the year and your spend in your relationship, was it up or down compared to what you normally would have spent in a normal year? Like, did it cause you to spend more money, less money, or did you, you know, as you rethought and pivoted? Um, I can start with that, Abby, if you, if you want. So um, before the pandemic happened, uh, Abby was working in a different department. So Abby and I didn't even work together until after a pandemic somewhat started. So Atlantic Lottery, we've always had an annual deal with Atlantic Lottery, um, just based on the type of business they are owned by the four Atlantic provinces and it's difficult to do multi-year, always has been a, an annual deal, um, but we always start those conversations in the summer. We were already starting what the next year would look like. So we were had the deal, we'll say ink Seamus, but not signed 
for what that summer was going to look like. It wasn't signed, but most of those deliverables now couldn't happen. So in other sponsor deals, they were different. They were multi-year deals. We were able to deliver some stuff and just keep that deal rolling. Uh, but this one was different. So we just started from scratch and said, what can we know? We want to do something. Um, talking with Atlantic Lottery, their objectives had changed. I don't want to speak for Abby, but they still wanted to help Atlantic Canada and anything that can happen. So, you know, she was open to ideas and she's like, you know, bring me something. <laughs> what can what can we do as we were all open to what that could look like? Um, overall spend, I would say what were some things were yes, less, some things were more uh, on certain things. So I wouldn't speak to just the Atlantic Lottery deal, but because of the TV special, for example, and the amount of eyeballs we were able to get in, in the reach, we had some sponsors spending the same amount as they normally would because we were able to justify what we did. And also based on the financial positions they were in, that they were willing to do it. Um, and then others were less spend, but I would say less value. So it was all open. It's like, let's talk about what we can do. And I know it seems strange, but my approach has always been price comes second. It's like, let's talk about what we can do together. And then we'll do evaluation and see where we're at. Um, yeah, so that would that'd be my answer is that we, it was a little bit less overall, but we did less. What do you say, Abby? Yeah, and just to add to that is from the partner side, I think probably everyone on this call has experienced this when, when trying to negotiate uh, um, agreements for last year, if you were able to, to have an event, is that businesses were severely impacted by this. So we knew that our budget to work with for our festival event program wasn't as as grand as maybe it has been in the past and and having that transparency with your partners and saying look like in the past if we've done x number of dollars to support your festival we're not going to be able to do that this year so how can we navigate something that still gives us that brand recognition and some of those perks but also we don't want to undervalue the partner so we want to make sure we come to a common ground with the with a monetary investment Oh, perfect. I also, any you know, I think that's, you know, obviously a valid point. I think Canvas Boost Festival is probably only one of the ones that were able to do some. Most festivals didn't exist. And you guys were the ones that were able to pivot and do, you know, some substantial programming. So kudos to you guys. It was a, it was a lot of sitting on the deck thinking of things we could do, right? And like, what can we do? throw it at the wall, see if it sticks. There's lots of ideas that we workshop to like, no, I don't know if people are going to care. And that was ultimately kind of going back to, is the audience going to care? Are they going to engage? As we started getting into the summer, everyone was zoomed out. Every artist who with an Instagram account was going live every Friday night, free show, free show, free show. So how do you get an audience to care and tune in to your specific time um, and wrapping it around the brand, put that some of those contesting, exciting elements, getting the ability to ask a question. And that's not everyone, but we all have our super fans. All of us have our super fans that would get engaged. And, and uh, I take to, to your point, Seamus, about Cavendish being able to do it. I think we're kind of is a good place maybe to lead into our next one slide, which is, I swear we didn't cue Seamus up, but the next one is a, a bit of a poll. I think that Jonathan's going to put up for us is, what did you do last year? Did you cancel? Was it virtual? Did you do a combo of in-person and virtual? Or did, were you able to do some, some stuff fully in person? Then the next one is, what are you planning to do this year? This is more of a comment just while we're waiting, but hmm. I, I found it really interesting and I jotted it down because I know when we were pivoting, which is the key word. I know. Don't we all hate that word? But oh, I never want to hear it, but we hate it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, one of the things I kind of tapped into when you said it and was like, yeah, great idea is like a lot of our clients that were interested in trying to make something happen last year, we're looking for a revenue stream for it to make sense to justify that $20,000, you know, production fee and, and um, really again, every model we looked at in, ter in terms of ticketing just didn't really make sense. It wasn't going to break even. So I really hit on and really appreciate what you guys are saying around the community proud and that Kim, that you worked with your partners more so to say, hey, it's a different year, but how can we 
leverage our partnerships and sponsorships and you know it's mutually beneficial so i think that'll be important again where we're not totally back to normal um for 2021 to think about that and think about how you can still get that brand awareness out so that's something i'm definitely going to take away well, thanks for that, Kelly. We we struggled with that when we were doing the virtual stuff of because we look and we talked to other events, like I'm sure you guys too, other events around the country and how, you know, how did you do this one and how many people came and did you get enough? Because some things can look really great on the internet, guys. And tell you, I've done some of it myself where you make it look great on the internet. Um, but in the back end, it, it was kind of a disappointment. So we want we didn't want it to be a disappointment. So in talking with other events that have done big shows with big artists that were ticketed at $15, they still only had 20 people show up and pay. Well, if we had a partnership with say Abby and Atlantic Lottery and I'm telling them this is gonna be awesome and only 20 people engage, well, that is a huge fail. And because I, I don't need the $15 ahead, it's really not going to make that big of a difference when you look at the volume you're going to get for a paid ticket online, where if you make it free, but not just free for like, just come whenever. It's one thing I would tell you as well that we learned is don't just put it online and then give it away for free later. Like don't do the, oh, you can then go watch it anytime you want. Create that urgency like the event, create it like it's now. If you don't come at that time, you're missing the boat. So I'm looking at our poll. So the three cancels, one virtual and one hybrid. Can we ask at this point, those that were doing virtual and hybrid, would you be open to sharing a little bit of how that how that worked and what you did? I can't tell who it was. I think I was one that said oh, great. virtual. Um, so for fall flavors, we pivoted in a couple different directions and one was in a totally different program, which was our Canada food Island gift card program, um, to support the tourism sector. Cause one of our festival mandates is room nights sold and also helping the restaurant and tourism sector, um, during what traditionally was our shoulder season of September. So we were trying to figure out how to support them in that direction. So that was a pivot, but on our hybrid element, um, we actually worked with Chef Michael Smith and tried to highlight everything that kind of stood for fall flavors, which is like consumption of our amazing shellfish and the pride. So we hired Chef Michael Smith um, through some great partnerships, ALC being one of them, actually. Um, and we were able to also uh, have Michael shoot four video series and we did give them away for free um, and we got a lot of good uptake on that. And that was kind of just getting people, our visitors, our Ontario and our Quebec market, thinking about the brand and kind of dreaming about when they could come back safely. Love it. If anyone That's hasn't awesome. heard of Food Island Partnership and those gift cards, it has been a game changer to PEI and is still is. So for those of you in other provinces, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with stealing a good idea from somewhere else. Like it has been a fantastic uh, win here for PEI just to help our, especially in the winter, to help our restaurants who have been open and closed and open and closed, depending on where we're at in, in pandemic. So it has been a big success. And even hopefully even after pandemic, that will still carry on to, that helps get people moving around. There's a dine program happening already this week. You can't get into a restaurant because they're so full with the deals. So it's awesome and totally working. And that's a great example of a whole bunch of different organizations coming together, seeing the problem and coming together with how can we come up with a solution? I'm sure it wasn't, if someone asked them two years ago, like, let's do this gift card program and sell them at half price. I'm like, no way. The world is different. So who else was and next to Kelly? There was another person or to Kelly, did you do both? Was there another person that did virtual or hybrid? Hi, Nancy from Camelton, or the Hi, your friends way. Um, we actually have a, a couple of different festivals that take place throughout the year. So unfortunately, some were canceled. We didn't have any choice, uh, depending on the uh, people that participate in the festival. Uh, but we did have uh, some chance to do a little bit of virtual and a little bit of in-person, uh, such as we did little scavenger hunts where you had to go to different businesses to see what they had on hand so hopefully we are creating a little bit more business for these businesses that were suffering as we all know restaurants accommodation and just retail um, and we were able to do something again this past February with our winter festival we were able to integrate a little bit of virtual whether it be music uh, activity sheets uh, scavenger hunts um, we did some 
different hunts that you could do in your backyard. So you don't have to mingle with people, some around your neighborhood. So you were able to mingle a little bit, but nowhere that there was any gatherings. I love that. I think you, your initiative is, it speaks volume, Nancy, because every business was impacted by COVID, whether or not you're an organization, a restaurant, a festival, everyone was impacted. So to put on something where you're encouraging folks to go to these businesses is, is really sweet. Um, and I, I'm sure it was received well. So looking at the second question, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, we've, we've learned to be very creative and have to try to uh, look at a plan, not necessarily on our decks, but look at a plan, look at the plan, switch it up, pivot, look at the plan again. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the nice part of that is you're not alone with that and everyone is in that same mindset. It's like you have a conversation and then you feel bad because you're like, oh, our plans just changed. We have to do this now. And I don't think, like personally, I've, I've been in that situation and I've had those plans and had to change them. And it's been, fortunately, everyone is okay with it. And the perception, like, we just get it. This is how we're going to have to work these next, next few months, but uh, hopefully not for, for too much longer. <laughs> so with the second question, what are you planning to do this year with your festival or events? Um, I'm curious, I see only one person said that they're, they're canceling. Were you, were you the same one who would have answered that you had to cancel last year? I, uh, that was us. Um, we, well, we're kind of a bit of a change right now too. So we're going through, uh, my screen is up there a little bit. So I'm just gonna stop my video. But we, um, we canceled because we're kind of in a bit of a transition period with our, our tourism. Uh, we're trying to become a, a tourism, well, we are becoming a tourism destination here on the uh, western side of the, of the province. And uh, so with that, there's some changes and really it had nothing much to do with the flow that we figured maybe it was a change in the festival that we're looking at uh, switching things up a little bit and uh, trying to, uh, I guess, bring it up to, we've been doing the uh, festival of labor for the 12 years and we just looked at doing some changes with that. So we figured maybe this is the year to maybe dig deeper with those changes. Sponsorship is a bit of a challenge for in a rural area. Uh, we do have a couple of major industries, but uh, they are the ones everybody seems to go after. So it is hard to sponsorship, especially, you know, going through the pandemic and everybody is looking for, you know, a little bit here, a little bit here and there to, to uh, help out with these, you know, those two uh, major industries. Uh, one of them being the games, uh, you know, Canada's their headquarters is here. So everybody hits them up and we just felt that maybe this is the year again, uh, we should really try to focus on uh, the direction we want this event to go and uh, then bring it back as a, you know, especially doing these things like this and hear everybody's uh, uh, plans and, and ideas, it certainly does give us, uh, give us some ideas and things to focus on. So. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for sharing. Hopefully, uh, I'm I'm excited to hear what you guys end up uh, doing for, let's say, 2022. And and hopefully after this call, you get some inspiration from, from this one and from the different folks on the call, because uh, I know it must be a challenge to have to make that decision to cancel not only one year, but two years in a row. And um, you just have to hope that the community understands and, and will stand behind you for when when you launch again, which I have full confidence in in where you're at. So with the hybrid, it looks like a lot of people are doing um, a bit of both in person and virtual. And then there is one that is doing completely in person. I'm curious, uh, the one who's doing completely in person, when is your festival happening and what is that going to look like this year? I, that, that was me. I should have clicked hybrid. I really should have, because I mean, nobody has the, the go ahead to do any large gatherings in person yet in the province. Anyway, um, we are, we do have our plans in place and they've been presented to the province. Um, obviously if we do get the go ahead, we're going, 
uh, we're going in person, but we do have uh, backup plans in place. Um, and we probably uh, got that a little bit from Cavendish. We actually do have um, a drive-in in Shediac, a real drive-in theater in Shediac. Oh, and um, so we, we will have a, a satellite uh, show there. We, we do believe that we'll have a satellite show there. And um, it was our mission to work on things that we're able to do no matter what. Like if, if this whole mess turns around again, then you never know. I mean, yes, the vaccine's out and that's great, but we needed to put our efforts in this winter into things that we were going to be able to, to proceed with no matter what. And um, of course, uh, Shediac is is small but mighty and people come to eat in Shediac. They really do. Um, last year, we did cancel our, our festival, but we had a two week lobster roll time and we sold, and this is units, we sold 6,000 lobster rolls in two weeks. So that's not counting uh, the other meals that, that, that people bought. So, so that was a, a huge success. There was 20 uh, participating restaurants, although, although we didn't have a festival, we helped the community that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then this year, no matter what, if, if, we, if we get to have a live festival or not, we're ha we have a lobster box that we will be selling drive through style. Like you're going to pre-order your box and uh, you're going to come pick it up. And then what we're also selling like to our sponsors is, is, is your money is going to help uh, us make a surprise bag for kids that we're going to give out for free. So um, that was, uh, that's a great incentive for our, our sponsors. So that's working out. And uh, again, it's drive through contactless pickup. Um, so we're just going to add to our, our program as we get answers from the province. So I, I should have hit hybrid if, if, if it's a no go for the, for the live shows, um, we'll have something virtual for sure. I did hear about those drive through pickups for the, uh, the like lobster boxes. And I heard that it was unreal and well worth the wait for some of those those pickup days so hats off to you guys and just trying to be mindful of of time do does anyone else who's going hybrid this year do they want to share super quickly what they're doing if not uh, kim and i can go into our next next part two All right, Everyone? I won't leave for awkward silence for yeah. much longer. We can we can go into the next next session. <laughs> uh, just before we jumped off the hybrid, Abby, I just wanted to throw in to the, and just in case there's anyone here on the call that isn't aware, um, Canadian Council of the Arts has announced some funding for virtual and hybrid events. So there is some funding available if you haven't done them before or you've been discouraged on some of the costs to do it well or to book your talent whatever that may be is there is some there's more funding that is going to be announced soon but there is already uh, Canadian Council of the Arts is funding specifically digital experiences and hybrid events uh, as well as factor so go do some internet searching and find that funding so I'm just going to close that poll and next we're going to go into this is where Abby and I have pivoted again for this session where we were going, originally we were gonna go and talk about more in detail of what we did. Um, but in recent weeks, like you're all seeing, we're now, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel is getting so much closer. So Cavendish Beach Music Festival, yes, that's normally 20,000 people. And is that gonna happen in July with 20,000 people? No. Are we good? We're looking at maybe doing a hybrid. Like you, I we have three to four different scenarios that are go when we hope one of which will happen. We know digital can happen, so we're planning for that, but also hoping to do like a drive-in model or perhaps the cohort sizes are larger. And so we're all looking toward what that may look like. But what we thought for this group to be in the best benefit for you is as we're getting closer not just talk about what happened, but get into a little bit of how now that things are going to be opening a little bit, 
how could we go through a scenario of how we would do a pitch or how are things kind of different and knowing that we're all from different shapes and sizes and yes cavendish is seen as a large one but but we we got to work and sing for our supper just like anybody else and you know this year was not six figure deals the way they normally are so we'd have to be just as creative as everyone uh, I think what we do have is a great benefit is, is our built-in audience that has been built up over the years and that we do have some full-time staff year-round, knowing that many organizations and festivals or throughout the region are run by volunteer groups and it's been tough. So we, we want to make sure that this is as accessible as possible. So don't think Cavendish Beach Music Festival and large events. So we wanted to pivot again with our presentation and go into a scenario. And this is where we're all gonna get together and do a little bit of work. So guys, I did um, some great brainstorming, came up with an innovative, amazing name called Kim's Best Fest for this new festival that we're all going to talk about. It's gonna be the next best thing. It's a new romance event for PEI in June. I'm targeting couples in the Maritimes age 20 to 35, primarily in Halifax, Moncton, Fredericton. And of course, we're all still looking forward to that bubble being open. So yes, looking at the Maritime audience, it is a new event. So I don't have a built-in big social media following or big, uh, big audience yet to pull from. And I'm looking for a partner uh, to help us. And I've come across the Abbey Festival Fund, which I think at this point may be a good fit for my new romance event, but Kim's Best Fest. And by looking through Abbey, so here's the objectives I've found, and I'll tell you where I found them. So it's growing their social media following. Um, at this point, I haven't talked to Abby. So Abby, I don't even, I just know there's the Abby Festival Fund and found out that their objectives would be growing their social media following, expanding their email marketing communications and growing and enforcing existing and current customers. And where did I find that out without talking to Abby is the pre-work that you do before you even reach out to Abby, to the Abby Festival Fund is at this point, I, I have to identify what I am as a festival. Um, but not just the brochure aware of the dates and that, but what is the flavor of my event? Um, like Kelly mentioned, like fall flavors. Well, that's a big culinary themed event. So with my romance event, I'm going after a couple. So it's, I have to go and find the story. What is the, what is that story that I'm telling where why an audience would care? And then in turn, why a partner would care. So you have your brochure aware, but then I've now determined the Abbey Festival Fund and what she wants. And now I've got to go and come up with a plan of how am I going to do, come up with a pitch to the Abbey Festival Fund uh, to get her to consider my new event. Um, Abby, anything you want to say before we kind of start jumping in to the task? No, I think my piece will come afterwards, but uh, we're going to do a little breakout session here and we'll keep this slide up. Hopefully it'll still show in the breakout room. Um, if not, just be mindful of what the objectives are. So grow social, expand email marketing and grow and enforce existing and current customers um, because that'll be one of your key items for, for our breakout session. And I don't know if yeah. you wanna hit next, yeah which is just a breakout session. Gonna pitch the event to the Abbey Festival Fund. So that's what we're gonna go and, and do in our breakouts is we have what the event is. We know a little bit about, we don't know everything. We haven't talked to Abby yet, but this is what we've been able to determine on checking out on social media. What is the Abbey Festival Fund doing? Who are they partnering with? What do they put out publicly about that? Um, if the annual report or anything is available on the website, give it a read try and find out what are their objectives at the very least what they did before what events have they been aligned with and does it appear that yours is also aligned like um, as we know with all the banks as an example um td traditionally only sponsors jazz festivals so unless i'm a jazz festival i don't want to waste my time or td's time because they're probably not going to come up um so 
I just use that as an example of, so we've already got to the point where I believe that there is some alignment here between my new romance event on PEI and the Abbey Festival Fund. So Jonathan, I think is going to throw us all into breakout rooms. And we're going to take 10 minutes and come up with some strategies of how we go at Abby looking for some funding. Well, I'm going to send you out now. The slide won't be in your uh, breakout rooms, but uh, hopefully you've got that. And Kim and Abby can just remind you if you have some questions on that. I'll give you a, a two minute warning and then a one minute warning. And if anybody gets kicked out, I'll be here in the main room to put you back. Have fun. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. We do. I always hate, no matter how much time we have, we're still in the middle of a conversation. And then I know that just happened with our team and then we just get cut off at the end. But uh, no, that was great. Um, I can speak super quickly about our, our session. I, we had a lot of good conversations and almost steered in a different direction too. Um, and it was really nice to hear from the people on the call just sharing what they do in terms of, of proposals and the research that they already do. And I was very impressed and I feel like not to toot my breakout sessions own horn, but they're, they know what they're doing, which is, which is really great to hear. Ooh, How did your session go, Kim? Competition, gauntlet thrown. Um, this wasn't even the plan, Abby, but we're the same way. Our team is rocking it, have a ton of ideas, and we had a great conversation, lots of great ideas, and uh, bringing it back to the partner and how are we going to win the business. Um, yeah, we're, we're ready for our pitch to the Abbey Festival Fund. We have a member of our team who's going to pitch. So I don't know if we want to do breakout room one or breakout room two first to pitch Abbey. Do you care, Abby? Which one do you want to go first? I don't care. I'll be totally transparent. Our team, like our group, didn't even really get to talk about a pitch to the Abbey Festival Fund because we were so busy chatting about uh, what you do to pitch. But maybe uh, someone on the call from okay. our, our breakout team would be interested in in pitching after uh, after your team goes first if they're they're down with that. Awesome. So okay, what I know our team we can go first and to pitch ours and then maybe your team can pitch but would love to hear kind of how yours went a little bit different so our team we did we kind of stuck to task and just talked about the pitch so i'm very confident in our team's ability to pitch the abby festival fund so abby i would like to introduce to you kelly murphy from kim's best fest representing our team um, has, has wants to is going to pitch on our behalf of our great ideas of how Kim's Best Fest can meet these objectives for the Abbey Festival Fund. So over to you, Kelly. Thank you. I'm going to bring you everywhere. You're a great hype girl. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Um, yeah. So we had a great session in our breakout group with um, you know we took three different approaches. We wanted to come to the table with some variable options and kind of looking at what the objectives were, we wanted to kind of touch on each one. Um, so the first one we started with is, you know, how could we look at helping the Abbey Fund grow their social? Um, so one thing we were thinking about is obviously we're, you know, unfortunately still in COVID time. So we were looking about something that um, would work and people would feel safe and comfortable with. Uh, so we didn't land exactly what it would look like, but one idea we had was on an Instagrammable moment. So tying that in um, to the theme of the Kim Best Fest, um, be, you know, romance themed, it would be located in the region of the event, and it would also have brand recognition for the Abbey Fund as well into the event. Um, so we thought they, um, you know, be very, and hopefully um, kind of start trending on social. And then we also had an element of, <coughs> excuse me, creating a hashtag um, that would be able to have people enter a contest. And, you know, that could be uh, a multi package on, you know, some Abbey Fest swag giveaways along with some event ticketing as well. So that was our social. Um, Seamus and our group also had a really great idea um, about how to bring in 
kind of what you guys were talking about, about both partners winning and also involving a third partner. So the, the win, 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 um, and doing an ultimate romance package. Um, so that would be a contest element, you know, they could enter digitally. So we'd be able to collect their email, uh, marketing, um, and also tying in, um, the event. And we talked about involving, since this was a romance fest, a local accommodation operator, since that's a kind of a, a partner that's been hit hard during COVID and also some gift cards, um, for different restaurants so that they're immersing themselves actually in the community when they're winning this prize and also kind of hopefully tying into that messaging with the Abbey fund. The third one we had, um, was on how to grow existing customers and also that marketing comms is, um, I think we're all in agreement that, uh, if it hasn't already, your ticketing is definitely going to be going digital versus, you know, the old school walk up. Um, so there's multiple components of that, but, uh, collecting email database and, and making sure that brand is there when they're buying the ticket, the follow up So that's like your e-newsletter. Um, also Kim brought up a good point when people are, you know, learning about the event. So they have to read more than ever that script that you're sending because they need the safety information, the arrival time, the cohort information. So there's a great, uh, tie in there and also just linking that five to 35 hopefully is the alignment for the Abbey Fest and it's the same existing customer. So we thought that would be a nice package. And we, we thought we would go in with a $5,000 ask. We really packaged this together for Abbey Fest. <laughs> Great. Awesome. I love Elevator. that. I feel, Elevator like, pitch. I feel like you're making our breakout session team looks so bad right now, but we did have some really, really great conversation. Um, and I appreciate the route that you guys went and did stick to the task, whereas I will say maybe it was my own fault too. We, we had some other sidebar conversations that were really helpful. Um, I, I love how you guys looked at every objective and marketed it to the Abbey Festival Fund for, for something that would be of interest. Um, I don't know if anyone from our breakout session would be interested in in maybe chatting a little bit about what we chatted about. Um, I know it's we didn't really dive into how can we like ideas about different um, options for each objective. But uh, Cindy, would you like to talk about a little bit of the pre research in addition to what uh, what we chatted to? Sure. I just, uh, I guess, you know, I think we just went off with the first question on what would we do. And so that was, you know, pre obviously was doing the research and the, and gathering the partners, um, was kind of where we were with that. Abby, am I correct? in, in that quick summarizing, but yeah, so do, you know, doing the research of who you're seeking funding from as well as, doing a lot of research of who your personal, you know, who you can partner with to achieve. And I think we, we kind of just went off then to talking about, you know, this year in particular, or now as things pivot and change, what if you're dealing with partners that don't pivot or funding agent, funding groups that haven't adjusted for that either. Their, their grant applications are as stale as they, or not stale, that's probably the wrong word, but as, rigid in its in its criteria that than it was before so um i liked uh, julie you know jumped in and said that having a COVID plan and plan for COVID it was a real um uh, informative for me especially when we talk about uh who our partner who we are partnering with so when you're dealing with uh as a non-for-profit which we are when we're dealing with community partners, not all of them have COVID plans. So the one thing because of resources that we don't want to do is tie up a lot of time and, and, and human resources in planning an event that they partners will pull from uh, because of the way that the, you know, the industry is rolling out in the, in the summer, we don't know, you know, third variables or third lockdowns. And we we just, in Newfoundland, as you well know, you know, we just came out of a second lockdown that happened really fast. 
And so our government, as someone noted right at the beginning, is very different than, than the Atlantic, even though we're open to the Atlantic, and I hope we're open to the Atlantic again really soon. Uh, but yes, it's um, for us, we talked about time management, human resources, and um, pivoting still, I guess. Is that a good summary, Abby? <laughs> I'm looking at you. That was that great. Doesn't... Nothing, nothing like putting you on the spot. That was that was really good. <laughs> well, Abby, you got an ask for five grand. I know. Table. I feel like I, I feel like I should be giving, uh, giving Kelly and and your uh, group the deal because. Oh, I can ask for five guys, grand. <laughs> it's that easy to get to get to <laughs> if it was only Why? that easy right if it was only that easy you didn't tell me that <laughs> oh you're you coming in i would have sent her a proposal before i i would have took the last two hours and typed it up yeah. had we known that was going to be the case we we <laughs> okay kelly you win <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, that is totally our breakout group sessions fault, mostly my fault. I was just enjoying our conversation and and uh, didn't bring us back to the the real objective. We had some some great conversations, which is ultimately the real objective of why we're all here today, right? Not just to go through an exercise. So, so I I think I heard that Kelly won us five grand. Did I hear that right? Woo, team two, five grand. Good job, team. The best fast is gonna happen. So are we getting it everything we asked for, Abby? Is there any changes or did you like everything? Are we looking at a, we're looking like deal, no deal or a different deal? We'll look at a different deal and I'll go with, um, just to spice it up a little bit that the the social plan that you pitch Kelly um it was great for you to pitch it but after reading it doesn't 100 percent align with our strategy just to play devil's advocate here so what the Abbey festival fund will pitch back to you is four thousand dollars instead of five and we would love to help and do some further email marketing to support your event how does that sound? You've got a deal. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, it doesn't work there for a I was minute. Say, if it doesn't work for Kelly, it works for us. <laughs> but in all the reality, that's a little bit of how the typical scenario plan goes out, right? Like you, you do your pitch, you put a price tag on it, and there is. You know, and I know Seamus has been doing this for years too. It's a bit of a science and a bit of an art, and ultimately, it's worth what someone's going to pay. So when you get into valuations and, you know, we came up with our plan, our idea, we put we put a price tag of $5,000 on it, but we thought it was worth, Abby looked at it and said, I like 90% of what you said, and, and I'm going to give you four. And at this point, I don't know if we even know why. Is it because there's only so much budget? Is it because, oh, yeah, you did say the social plan. You're like, you didn't really love our social plan. So is there room to have further discussion about our social plan and learn more from you and maybe to get it back up to five? Or is it because you only have a hard budget of four? Is it if we got to you at an earlier time of year, there would be more budget available? So I get the point of this exercise was it is a give and take and a flow and a conversation. And we're not selling an oil change that's $50, take it or leave it, right? We're, we're creating something new together. Valuations and sponsorship are all over the place. Everyone has a different opinion on what it is worth. So I totally agree with Kelly. It's a new event. We're going to take your four grand. If I was, if our event was around a little longer, we may look at cutting something that I know is important to you to say, okay, we'll take the four grand, but we're not going to be able to do that email thing that we really wanted to do because, you know, that is only available to partners in at five to see, would she move up to five if I took away the big thing that I know she wants? So 
You know, uh, Kim, I wonder yeah. if we devil's advocate, would you, would you implement or in, uh, propose a performance-based valuation? Listen, sure. I will, I will yeah. deliver you 10,000 eyeballs or impressions and you'll pay me $5,000. But if this went viral and I delivered you 100,000 impressions, would you be willing to pay 7,500 or $10,000? Uh, pay to play kind of. I, I would pitch that. I have pitched that and we've had deals that are like that. You get that a lot in um, consumption, say on the alcohol side, here's sure. a base for the rights fee. Plus it, we all get a piece if we have a bank gangbuster year. And then there's also certain categories. We'll say the cannabis category in particular can market only very specifically in the market, but they pay, they, they overpay to be exclusive. But they will pay like $5 per email acquisition. So if you're getting just that and you know you can get that reach, then we're putting more effort into it on that reward model. And I think post-pandemic, Seamus, it's a great point of it's risky for everyone to get involved in events. And if we can look at our base rates maybe being a little bit lower than they were before, but looking at that whole deal with a little more of a back-end deal, like almost like you do with an artist on the production side, but I think that's a very good point is look at not just a flat amount, but looking at what you'd call like a back end deal or these incentive, these incentive. If I can get Abby to the Abby Festival Fund, five new subscribers or 5,000 new subscribers, well, that's worth something significantly different to the partner. And yeah, and then it's less risk. If we all grow, everybody gets a piece. Is it a well, double edged sword though if, it, if it's a dud and you don't deliver? Yeah, and then we're all taking that risk together. Yeah, I mean, are you looking for, um, you know, rebates or deductions on future years or anything like that? I mean, is it? I think that's a great discussion. Um, okay. And everyone, I think what we've done through the pandemic and even before pandemic, we've there's been situations where we've had this discussion. For those that don't know, even before pandemic, CBMF had a hurricane in 2014. We had a whole day that didn't happen. We didn't do any rebates to sponsors nor did anyone ask. Um, we've had one partner one time bring up a discussion about because their alcohol sales were lower, um, but we had another brand that just took off. And it's like, well, it's not that we did something wrong. It's the competitor just killed it in their activation and they did a better job than you. So no, I wouldn't do a rebate on, on that. Um, during pandemic, we didn't do any rebating either. So I think it, it depends and each deal is different and what you can still offer. But I think we'll see more of those deals where it's less about just a, a rights fee and that's it. Anybody else have any comments? Jonathan. Yeah, I'm just aware of the, the time, everyone. Um, and uh, uh, such incredible conversation happening. And I, I appreciate uh, everything that uh, has been so I just want to see if we can uh, bring this to, to a bit of a close. Um, any final last sort of questions or comments that anyone wants to make? Okay, uh, Kim, Abby, any final sort of closing little nuggets you want to share with uh, everyone before we close off? I just want to say, um, in terms of pitching your partnerships, I mean, Kelly, your your group did a great, great job. Um, but some things that I always find stands out, not just from, because I'm here independently from Atlantic Lottery, so not just from Atlantic Lottery, I, I find value in doing your research, which we talked about that in our breakout session, is, is understand your market, understand who you're applying to understand what their goals and objectives are and how can your organization or your event um, bring bring benefit to to the potential partner that you're seeking and um, another thing that I find stands out is you want to be unique and you want to look at it like you're not just one of a hundred festivals applying for a sponsorship you want to sell it and I know Kim even said this for, for Kelly, it's, it's an elevator pitch. You want your, your proposal to stand out and 
you don't want to just copy paste off your website because if your partner is, if you're putting in the work, I guarantee your partner or potential partner is also putting in the work and they're likely going to already check out your website, take a look at what's on there. So you really want to sell it and, and be different. And I, I had mentioned this on our, our breakout session too, is, is what is your objective from your partner? Are you looking for simply you have a target of raising $20,000 to pull off your event. So you don't care who you partner with. You just want the money. Or are you looking to build a true partnership? And for the most part, folks on, on the call, it seems like there was that appetite in a true partnership where you're not just cutting a check. Um, and, and that does speak volume because you don't want, at the end of the day, your partners, I think most people are surprised at how willing their partners are to go an extra mile to help out, uh, help out an event. So if you're willing to work with them and know that you're just not looking for simply $5,000 or $4,000 for Kim's best best, um, you could have a really, really great partnership. Thank you, Abby. Great, uh, great sort of parting uh, ideas and words of wisdom. Um, Thank you, everyone. I know that uh, we went over a little bit, but I appreciate for you uh, for you all uh, giving us, you know, uh, an hour and a half of your time this morning. I know how busy all of you are. I hope you were able to uh, take a, take some new things away from this. As I said, it's a, an extremely important component of what we do in Atlantic Canada. Um, you know, not only for our visitor economy, but I think it's so important for our communities and how it brings us together. So. Uh, thank you once again, Abby. Thank you, Kim. 